problems of the rotator cuff are one of the most common reasons why surgery is performed on the shoulder. And the most commonly injured tendon of the rotator cuff is the one on the top of the shoulder blade, which is known as the supraspinatus tendon. So if we look at this model, the clavicle is in the front and the shoulder blade is in the back. So if we look from the back side of the shoulder, the supraspinatus is at the top of the shoulder blade. It comes underneath the bone known as the acromion and attaches to the area of the humerus, which is known as the greater tuberosity. When there's a tear in the rotator cuff, this tendon pulls off of the bone. That makes it difficult to raise up the arm because of pain and weakness. And this area can have some abnormal relationship with this bone known as the acromion, which can also be related to mechanical symptoms of discomfort in the shoulder. What we do to fix this problem is that we perform arthroscopic surgery to mobilize this tendon, get it back over to the arm bone, and then fix it down into place with specialized devices that fasten or anchor the tendon down to the bone. That surgery, which is done with a small light source and camera, allows us to look from behind underneath the acromion. We can see this area where the tendon is torn. And after we've mobilized this tendon, we scrape the bone so the tendon and the bone will heal together. And then we sew that down into place. Now, it takes about six weeks for that tendon and the bone to actually grow together. So during the first part of the recovery after the surgery, the patients are asked not to use their arm at all so the tendon and the bone can glue themselves together. We do use very strong sutures and anchors to hold this in place, but what happens is the tendon is relatively weak at this time, and it may pull out of those sutures if we don't go slowly right after the surgery. The surgery is done on an outpatient basis thanks to the arthroscopic techniques that we use, which minimize the amount of pain uh, that individuals will have from this surgery. And then once they're home, we show them very simple activities, such as moving the arm gently in a circular fashion, moving the elbow and moving the hand. And they see the therapist for some exercises the therapist can assist them with for the first six weeks. From six to 12 weeks, they are able to start moving their arm and using it for their daily life activities. At 12 weeks or three months after the surgery, we're more aggressive with the strengthening program. At about four and a half months, we begin sport or work-specific type strengthening activities, and we anticipate for a single tendon repair and an otherwise healthy individual about a six-month recovery. If there's more than one tendon that's injured or if the individual is not as healthy as the general population for either medical reasons or for reasons such as smoking, which is known to be a deterrent to tendon and bone healing, our recovery times are extended and may be as long as nine months to one year. The operation is very successful for alleviating the pain that patients present with, with rotator cuff problems. It's good at restoring range of motion in most individuals, but the functional returns are somewhat variable. In younger patients with good muscles and tendons, the functional returns and strength are very good. But as we get into our 60s and 70s and 80s, we may get excellent pain relief and good movement, but our strength returns may not be what we had hoped for. This is all discussed ahead of time so that we're both having similar expectations from the results of the surgery.